Hello, it's Davey Mooney coming to you from the University of North Texas where I run the jazz guitar program. I'm a Benedetto artist, Sunnyside Records artist. Got my four Sunnyside CDs up here and the new one way back. It's coming out June 9th. Stay tuned for uh, gigs and uh, stuff like that. And I got my two Mel Bay books, Personalizing Jazz Vocabulary, Into the Labyrinth. Got an idea for a new one. It's percolating in my uh, head right now, in my brain. Um, let's see, it's late April, mid to late April here, uh, getting towards the end of the spring 2023 semester. Um, getting ready for some travel this summer. And uh, yeah, just getting through it all. And uh, But I actually, today I want to talk to you about something else. I want to talk to you about the Jerome Kern song, I'm Old Fashioned, Jerome Kern with Johnny Mercer lyrics. And uh, really great jazz standard, you know, always uh, Jerome Kern is such a big part of the uh, standard repertoire. And he was such a harmonic uh, trickster, devious little harmonic uh, uh, puzzles and tricks that he put into his tunes, like All the Things You Are, um, Long Ago and Far Away, Nobody Else But Me, Yesterdays, so many songs that he wrote. Um, this one, I was just looking it up, I believe it was written for a, mu uh, a film called You Were Never Lovelier with Rita Hayworth and Fred Astaire. I think that's 1942. Um, the versions that I know the best of this song, it, it's one of those tunes that's been recorded by everybody, all the vocalists, many of the instrumentalists, but it's a handful of recordings that I know pretty well. Uh, the Ella Fitzgerald uh, Jerome Kern songbook, which I love because uh, I love Ella Fitzgerald and it's a uh, uh, what's his name? Nelson Riddle arrangements, which I always love listening to for the, the harmonies and the textures, you know, the orchestrations are always so great. Um, Keith Jarrett, Live at the Blue Note. Man, one of the greatest collections of uh, piano trio playing. I don't know, pretty much anything Keith Jarrett does is in my top echelon of, of jazz recordings. The Blue Note uh, recordings, like from 1994, I believe. And when I was an undergrad here, uh, everybody was listening to to that stuff, you know, sort of uh, the golden era of the Standards Trio in the 90s there. I mean, they were always great, but there was just a series of records in the 90s. Standards in Norway, uh, Standards of Tokyo in 96, and the Blue Note was like a four CD set, but uh, they play this tune. Um, Chet Baker uh, from Chet Baker Sings It Could Happen to You. Chet Baker also sings I'm Old Fashioned on that album. And of course, it's the ballad on uh, Blue Train, John Coltrane record. So a lot of, that's some, some heavy hitters right there in the jazz uh, pantheon. And, uh, you know, I guess what I'm going to talk about, I mean, I love playing on this song, but as with pretty much every tune that uh, I talk about, especially with the, the standard standards, the sort of American songbook standards, there are, there's significant variation in certain spots with the harmonies on this thing. And, you know, there's also a chart I don't believe it was in the original, you know, illegal real book that we all uh, bought under the counter or out of the trunk of someone's car uh, back in the day. But it's in the uh, the legal real book called the New Real Book, Volume One. When I was an undergrad here, I used to that was part of my sort of sight reading practice and working out chord melodies. I would just read through standards from that book. I, I, I thought the changes were pretty legit. You know, I think they they got the copy right down at the bottom, so they got them from somewhere. Um, so that chart is pretty good, but then, you know, you compare it to Ella, Keith, Chet, and Train, it's closest to what uh, Keith played. But I don't think that he got it from that book. I don't think that book was even out then, and I don't know how he goes through. Uh, Rick Beato didn't ask him how he <laughs> gets the changes to his tunes for the Standards Trio. But, uh, yeah, basically, it's a really cool tune, because it's just a series of, it's actually the same length as All the Things You Are. I, I went through and counted the uh, the bars this time, so I was, <laughs> I'm ready. Sometimes I do these videos, and I just, I know the song, but I don't actually think mathematically how many bars it is. But it's 36 bars, but it's not really A-A-B-A -A -A with a tag. I mean, it kind of is. It's kind of like an eight-bar section, another second eight-bar section, a third eight-bar section, a fourth eight-bar section with a little tag at the end. And they're all slightly different. And uh, he's kind of a trickster. Um, it reminds me of several of his tunes. There's a little bit of Long Ago and Far Away in here, but basically it's like... Uh, the key, I'm going to do it in F, because that's what Keith Jarrett does, but uh, Ella is in D-flat, Chet is in A-flat, Train is in E-flat. So, and you know, I'm sure we could listen, I could listen to like 
at least a dozen more versions and fine variations in the key. But I think on gigs I've played it a lot in F uh, with people. So it starts off like just one six two five in F. The first four bars are just one six two five twice, and then a kind of like B flat over F. Then F, then a E minor seven flat five to A seven. And pretty much all the versions agree with that. That's the first eight bars, and then D minor G seven. That's four bars in a G minor story song that April sings. And this part, like the uh, second four bars of the second eight bar phrase, so bars like, uh, what is that, 13 to 16, uh, there's slight variations. Like the, the chart actually says G minor, G minor, A flat diminished, G minor, C7. I found on the uh, Nelson Riddle record, what they do is a G minor. It's like G minor for a bar into a G7 for a bar to C7 for two bars, or you know a dominant thing. So kind of like a secondary dominant five of five. Um, I didn't really hear that diminished. I feel like Keith plays it for like a second. He plays a little A flat diminished. He kind of just sneaks it in there. Um, but, you know, depending on the tempo, you kind of don't need to really put anything. It can just be sort of G minor for, uh, I guess, three bars before the, before the C7. Um, on uh, Keith's version, when, when they solo, they tend to go like G minor, G minor, A flat minor, D flat, G minor, C7, F. Just to give them a little more, I guess, stuff to play over since that's a long four bars if you just play G minor to C7. But they don't even really do that every chorus, you know, and they're so spontaneous and uh, inspired and brilliant, they can play whatever changes they want. But uh, when I play on the tune later, I'm gonna use that little A flat minor, D flat seven, in the, uh, what is that, bar 15 or whatever it is. And the next, uh, you think the next four uh, eight bar phrase is gonna be like the first one because it sort of starts the same. It's like this, although the melody is different. So he tricks you, he goes, this is one of his, uh, like every song has one trick in it, I feel like, at least of uh, Jerome Kern. Um, what he like, I think he liked to call enharmonic modulation. I don't know if that's what's going on here, but so basically that third eight bars is F, D minor, G minor, C. like he walks up the uh, diatonic seven chords or triads of uh, in the key of A like A major B minor C sharp minor D major and some people play D7 and Keith kind of sneaks a D7 in there on the head but other versions it's like a D major or a, or a D6 D major 7 or D6 like you know the four chord in A would be then E7 then F sharp diminished to get you back to G minor C7 F. So that's kind of sneaky. So it, it, that's what Jerome Curran, like, you know, on the bridge of uh, all the things you are, he likes to trick your ear and uh, trick you into different keys. So so that C that you think is, I'm sorry, the, uh, the note E, which you think is like the third of C7 getting you back to F becomes like the... 11 of B minor, the root of E7, and then you're in A. So it's a little trick. So that's pretty, pretty wild. So it's like A, it's almost like a little scale pattern of the melody. A major, B minor, C sharp minor. a trick so the note A which in the key of A of course is the root of A uh, he puts an F, sh F sharp diminished there so it's like a D7 going back to 
G minor to 5 to F. So. You think it wants to be? To stay in A with that F sharp, which in the key of A would be an F sharp minor, right? He makes it an F sharp diminished, which takes you to G minor. So it's he's playing these little half-steppy and harmonic uh, tricks. <laughs> but it's fun to play over that part, and I, I think like uh, when people improvise over it, it's kind of just like you stay in the key of A, and then D7, G minor, C7, that's how I think about it. I don't necessarily try to hit all those chords. Um, it sounds a little, I don't know, a little awkward if you try to improvise on all of them. Um, then the next, so now we're, that's the third eight bars, this is the fourth eight bars. So it's almost, you feel like that's sort of the bridge, but all the phrases, well not all, all the, all the eight bar phrases are, are unique, so I don't know how you, uh, how you want to think about it. It's kind of just A, B, A, C to me. So then the last eight bar phrase, it's actually a 12 bar phrase because it has a little tag. It starts like the first one. One, six, two, five. And then here's where there's some variation on different versions. So, so Keith Jarrett goes uh, two five to the four, and then four minor or E flat seven. So C minor, F seven, B flat major, E flat seven, and then A minor, D minor, B minor, seven flat five, B flat minor, and then three six two five. That's a little tag. So. Then I was listening to the uh, the Ella version, and she's in D flat. But they go instead of the uh, so the the first four bars of that phrase are always F, and always one six two five twice, right? I made some notes here. I'm trying to look at. So then Ella Fitzgerald, they just go. So they go A minor, D minor. They don't do a two five to B flat. So A minor, D minor, B minor seven flat five, B flat minor six, A minor. D minor, G7, and then 3, 6, 2, 5, 1. So instead of that whole 2, 5 to 4, they don't do that at all. Um, Chet goes, uh, G7, B flat minor, E flat, A minor, D minor, G7, B flat minor, E flat. He does that twice, that same phrase. Ballad, so it goes a lot slower than that. And then the train one is, is interesting because he's in, a, uh, let's see, I have to do it in uh, the right key. I have it in E flat here where I wrote it down, so I'm not going to have a little brain cramp. But so he goes right to the, uh, he starts on A minor again, but he goes like this little A minor, B flat major. I mean, he's in another key, but if we're in the key of F, he goes A minor, B flat major. Uh, a minor, D minor, B flat major, E flat seven, and then the same thing again. And then the G seven, B flat minor, E flat seven. I mean, in his key, it's that's such an iconic uh, recording. I guess I should say in, in his key. So G minor, A flat, G minor, C minor, A flat major, D flat seven. Um, so yeah, that's that's the variations right there, right? Um, I feel like these days most people, I mean, I don't play this with that many people. It's usually my gig when I'm calling it, but I use those Keith Jarrett changes just because uh, I don't know. I feel like it's more fun, more fun to play over those. And uh, I'm gonna play on the tune. I guess in terms of like what to play on this song, I mean, it's uh, a lot of like two fives and pretty standard harmony. Uh, along the lines of the other tunes from the Great American Songbook. Um, it's not that unusual except those modulations that you have to uh, be aware of, obviously. And one thing I th about this tune and also Long Ago and Far Away, which uh, also ha uh, 
has those, it's almost like endless feeling 1, 6, 2, 5 cycles. And then all of a sudden you're in a different key. Um, I try not to always feel like I have to play on every chord. Sometimes I just play some melodies in F. or eight bar phrase where he goes. So I make sure I, I hit the F sharp diminish, getting me back to G minor, but over the, that A walk up, I don't go. I don't try to play all those ascending chords. And uh, I feel like that I have a more uh, successful and a more uh, yeah pleasurable <laughs> improv experience when I don't try to hit every chord. It's almost like those A sections and rhythm changes where I kind of generalize over B flat for the first four bars when you have like one, six, two, five, like one, six, two, five, over and over again. Um, and yeah, it's just a beautiful tune. It's just interesting enough where you think you know what's going to happen and then there's a little curveball um, that he throws at you. But anyway, I'm going to play some, uh, improvise some choruses on this tune, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy it. I'm old-fashioned. <laughs> 